exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up and have not let my enemies triumph over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you. Being a grandmother is really wonderful. My first and only granddaughter, Ella, is three months and 21 days old today. It has been a great joy for me to watch my daughter and son-in-law become parents. It has been a great joy for me to remember the days when my baby was young and I was first a parent. Looking back and recognizing all the growth that my daughters have gone through and anticipating all the growing that my granddaughter will do, it's astonishing. I, I actually think there's a bit of wisdom that comes from being a grandmother. Or maybe it's just wisdom from having survived 30 years of parenting, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it isn't wisdom at all. Maybe it's, maybe it's just patience. 
you know? Patience. We learn that most unexpected and unpleasant circumstances will pass. We, we learn that most urgent emergencies that don't have a clear path forward will become clearer if we just kind of take a deep breath and a healthy pause. We learn that the worries that we take with us into the night will dissipate and lessen with the new day. But then maybe it isn't patience, maybe it's just persistence, you know, like just doing what you got to do and putting one foot in front of the other, keep on keeping on. Most persistence is something we learn from our children, isn't it? <laughs> children can be very persistent. It doesn't matter how many times we tell our kids no, it will spoil your dinner. They still ask for that candy bar at the checkout counter at the grocery store. Persistence, right? And yet grandmothers know that one candy bar before dinner really isn't going to spoil much of anything, right? I'm looking forward to being able to take Ella to the grocery store and for the day that she is old enough to ask Granny for a candy bar, I'm going to buy her one, one for me too, and we'll eat it on the way home. <laughs> you know, persistence is, is praised in the Bible. You know, that, that ability to continue steadfast, to maintain purpose, to, to bolster and sustain and, and to uphold Job. He never gave up insisting that his circumstances were unfair, no matter how many times his friends told him he must have done something to deserve it. And he never gave up on trying to hold God accountable, even though it was God he was arguing with. The widow, known as the persistent widow in Jesus' parable, she never gave up her fight to right the wrong that had been done to her. And, and she knocked and she bothered and she wore down that judge until he finally gave in and did what she had been asking for. And Paul? Paul never gave up on the churches he began, no matter how disgruntled they were, no matter how argumentative they became or how factious the community was. Paul never gave up on the mission to share good news, no matter how many times he was beaten or imprisoned or shipwrecked. And you know, the Psalms, they are some of the most persistent scriptures in all of our Bible. The psalmists are persistent in their honesty. Psalmists don't pull any punches, just like Job, the widow, and Paul. The psalmists are going to tell you exactly what has gone wrong, and they will say exactly what they think and feel about what has gone wrong, and they will say exactly what they expect God to do about what has gone wrong. The psalmists are persistent in faith, like Job and the widow and Paul, because the psalmists follow their honest rants with the absolute conviction that God will do the right thing and all will be well. And they say this even before God has done anything at all. The psalm we heard sung and chanted this morning, thank you, choir, or quartet, 
It is a classic example of a psalm of thanksgiving, and it, it moves from a commitment to praise God, to naming the different acts God has performed in order to deliver the people, and then it invites others to join in the praise of God. And then there's a second half that repeats that. The psalmist has, has been shaken, something has gone wrong, and so asks again for mercy, asks God to deliver, and then the psalmist praises again. Now, the biblical scholar David Peterson remarks that this psalm, quote, is filled with movement from the present to the future and then back to the past before returning to the initial present moment. And I suppose time doesn't really matter because God is consistent throughout time, consistent in faithful, in mercy, and in love, past, present, and future. God delivers. God has delivered. God will deliver. God delivers. And for the psalmist, that means there is always a morning that is full of joy. I probably shouldn't buy my granddaughter a candy bar and let her eat it before dinner. I know my daughter would be angry. I know I would have been angry if my mother had done something like that for my daughter. When I was first a parent, I wanted to do everything very, very by the book. I, I read all the books and I followed all the guidelines and the recommendations. I upheld a no sugar rule for the entire first year of my firstborn daughter's life. In fact, on her birthday, I made a sugar-free carrot cake I helped her eat it, keeping her very clean while she did, and then I had a piece of that cake. Only then did I realize that it tasted horrible. <laughs> yeah. By the time my second daughter had her first birthday, it was a full-on chocolate cake covered with sugar icing. And she dived into it without my help or hindrance, and enjoyed every moment of it as she somehow managed to get chocolate cake in her belly button, in her hair, in her ears. You know, I don't regret it. I mean, why wait for her to experience the joy of chocolate cake? <laughs> we wait for a lot of things. We say to ourselves, just, just wait until we get over this hump. Just, just wait until our ship comes in. Just wait until the morning. Things will be better then. And you know, I've always been a person who, who loves anticipation. I, I find great joy in anticipation, the anticipation of a trip, you know, learning about the place that I intend to visit, exploring the history and creating the itinerary and counting down the days. I love the anticipation of being able to, to gather with friends for, for dinner, you know, finding new recipes and deciding on the menu, making the house brim with hospitality and adding all those special touches. The anticipation of a visit from people out of town, whether it's my best friend or my dear colleagues or old neighbors or family or my granddaughter. My granddaughter Ella will have her first visit to Granny's house in a few weeks and I can't wait. <laughs> you know, when I read this Psalm, Psalm 30, that, that whole time movement that the biblical scholar refers to, it, it confuses me. I, I read the psalm and I can't tell if God has already turned the psalmist's mourning into dancing or if the psalmist is just absolutely certain that God will one day. I can't quite tell if the verses are a repetition of the same event or is the first half what God did once and the second half is a request for God to do it again. But you notice, either way, there is joy. Whether God has already acted or just not yet. So why wait for joy? 
Why wait for joy? Why persist without it? You know, persistence without joy would be like like Job just complaining day in and day out. But, but, but with joy, Job's words could be like that, that dramatic, well-argued court case that you know the verdict has got to come in with him in favor. You know, persistence without joy would be like that widow knocking on the judge's door, just a loud, obnoxious, monotonous pounding. But with joy, it could be a, a rhythmic beat that, that calls one to dance. Persistence without joy would be like, like Paul scolding, shaking a finger or shaking a fist. But with joy, Paul offers a way to build a stronger church full of good news and great joy. Joy comes. Joy comes. So why wait? You know, for as much as I think I'm wise as a grandmother, you know, the Psalms, there is so much wisdom in those words. And this wisdom has been passed on through generations from grandmother to granddaughter or preacher to congregation or person to person. And the wisdom of the Psalms, you know, they, they tell us that whatever it is we're going through, it, it consumes us. But in the big picture, God's got this. The Psalms tell us that, that the places where we're so confused, we don't know what to do next, and, and, and we feel like we're all alone in that decision, the Psalms tell us that we can trust God. The Psalms tell us that, that the worries of the night, they turn into a joyful morning. Joy comes. So why wait? By the way, I discovered probably into my daughter's third year of life that my mother-in-law actually did feed her chocolate well before her first birthday. She turned out just fine. Why wait indeed, right? It makes me want to go out and buy a candy bar right now and, 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 and eat it. And just think about that one day. Thanks be to God. <laughs>